Hello everyone and welcome back to another video. This video is going to be a showcase and tutorial of installing a bathroom. I will try and explain certain things that you might need to know, some problems that you potentially may come across along the way and how to resolve them. So this particular bathroom took about two weeks. You can see the original bathroom it was just a bit dated i believe it's the original bathroom for the house the house is not that old but it's the original bathroom that came with it there was one leak in the shower and um well not a big leak but it was causing a little problem on the ceilings downstairs so on day one we begin to strip out the bathroom these newer homes unlike a lot of the older english homes have a lot of partition walls, plasterboard walls, um, timber stud or aluminium stud walls. This house had aluminium stud walls um, pretty much all the way around uh, the bathroom walls, the out external walls um, as well as the internal walls. So best thing to do if you're removing tiles off a bathroom like this, it may seem or sound like a lot more work or expense but it makes more sense to just rip the plasterboard out, uh, take the tiles off, and just take all the plasterboard off and re replace it because um, once you remove tiles from plasterboard, especially if it hasn't been skimmed, like they do in a lot of these new homes to save time and money, as soon as you take the tiles off, you damage the plasterboard, the plasterboard gets ripped um, you gouge it in many places and it just becomes too weak and brittle to tile over. Now if, t if the walls have been uh, skimmed first, you have more of a chance of being able to clean up the uh, adhesive and reuse. Um, so in this case, we just ripped everything out, took the tiles off, took the plasterboard off, back to uh, bare studs and now we're installing new plasterboard. So as this is a bathroom, um, we are going to use a mixture of normal plasterboard as well as moisture board. So the green plasterboards that you will see in the store are moisture boards. They are more moisture resistant and better for more humid environments. You can use them pretty much anywhere in the bathroom. Some people don't like to use them directly behind showers um depends again what the customer want is willing to spend uh, you can use cement boards directly behind the showers um, but in this case we're using moisture boards and as long as you've tiled and sealed everything well you shouldn't have any issues and you can see again the stud walls that we've removed now this is this is just a testament to a lot of these new homes how poorly some of them are built you could see there was insulation in the wall but only partly most of the wall hasn't actually been insulated these internal partitions should have insulation to uh, create a sound barrier between the bedroom and the bathroom but as you can see it was only half done so um, we've now plasterboarded the walls that took us half a day and you can see the green moisture board which is in the area where the shower is going to be we also replaced the old plywood floor that was down, which is also another thing that's worth doing. If you're gonna tile on floors, if you have floorboards, which a lot of you know English houses, Victorian houses, so on have um, timber floorboards, you cannot tile directly to those. So you need to put a sub base to tile onto. Um, you can use plywood, a good marine board. You can use um, cement boards um, there's various different products that you can use that um, allows you to tile onto timber floors so in this case we have used uh, plywood um, I can't remember exactly it's probably 50 mil um, we've installed down give it lots of screws um, so there's no movement in it at all um, so as you can see now we've done that and again now we've primed this board you can tile directly to board if you're going to tile directly to board use a primer um, if you're using a cement board you don't necessarily have to do that 
some people have their own views on this again in my experience it's really about how the person who's doing the work does it more so than the products um, we are tiling directly we're using these 600 millimeter by 600 millimeter tiles um, you apply your adhesive to the floor with a notch trowel and then make sure you also apply adhesive to the back of the floor tiles that way you make sure you have no voids and you have a good bond with the tile and the board tiling on floors is unforgiving unlike walls if you leave voids underneath the floor they will crack um, there any hollow spots when you're walking on them eventually they will crack if you drop something heavy on them they will crack so it's very important that you don't skip this step you can see that I'm applying adhesive all on the back of the tile you call it buttering the tile and you kind of apply it like you're buttering bread so don't use the notch side of the trowel use the smooth side and just give it an, a nice even thin coat over the tile and when you put it down it will create a suction between the adhesive on the floor and the adhesive at the back of the tile so basically what we're doing here is getting this floor partially tiled for today do as much as we can another important thing about tiling is planning planning where you put your tiles what pattern you're gonna have where you're gonna have your cuts and so on so always lay out a few tiles on the floor dry before you put adhesive and just see where they kind of line up make sure you don't have you know a little tiny cut at one corner a little sliver here make sure it works uh, the best often with rooms like this that have many focal points you've got a window there's going to be a sink um, you want to kind of choose where you want the tiles to be more of a focal point um, and trying to focus on getting a pattern there so if, if you know that your window is your focal point and you want let's say the middle of the tiles to line up with the middle of the window then you use that as your focal point and you make a pattern that will work somewhere around that um, so we've kind of started with a full tile to the right um, it worked out best for what we were trying to do again some people might want the tile to sit in the middle of the doorway again um, with us we often check with customers about this stuff what would you like what works best discuss it with them and we tend to go by what they want to do so they don't always take our advice on things um, but we always ask the customer how would you like the tiling to be arranged so we just continue to lay these tiles as much as we can obviously use the spacers um, a good idea they spent it cost a little bit more, more money but there are floor leveling spaces that you can use that help you to get your tiles more level um, if you're not confident just using type of normal spaces um, especially for large tiles as well again more unforgiving and um, if your floor isn't even it can be more problematic to prevent lippage but in this case our floor is quite even we're quite confident um, we just use normal spaces and we use two millimeter spaces most of the time which you feel looks best with the grout gaps So the plan here is just to lay um, as much as the large tiles and then when we come in the following day we'll be able to walk on this and then we can get at any of the little cuts around the edges that's pretty much how we tend to do it especially when you're working with small spaces like this it's one doorway in one doorway out um, obviously you got to make sure you don't get yourself stuck in the room um, I'm able to get out so I have my plan of how I get out of the room I'm able to stretch and step over the tiles also another most very important part is what type of tile adhesive you use if you're tiling onto boards or any type of flexible substance like this very important that you use a flexible tile adhesive okay this is very very important this adhesive 
um, gives a little bit of allows a little bit of movement in the floor obviously if it's timber it's going to move it's going to shrink it's going to expand the floor joists will shrink and expand and if the adhesive cannot have any type of movement you will more likely then to have tiles popping off or cracks in the tiles so again very important that you use the correct adhesive for the correct tile again if you're using porcelain tiles make sure the adhesive is designed for porcelain tiles so always check that on the bag of adhesive that you're purchasing the adhesives that the adhesives that we tend to use they come in bags and powder and we mix them with water as uh, definitely more cost effective and they tend to be better products so this is as far as we got for the day as you can see just laid the four tiles and the following day we will do the cuts our plasterboard is all installed now you can see we've screwed them all into the joists and we've been tiling the walls so again you notice we did the floor first we like to start with the floor first and then tile rest the tiles on the floor and go up the wall this bathroom after we did our measurements we realized that there was going to be a very small sliver no matter how we did it there would be a small sliver at the bottom a small sliver at the top or we'd have to start doing you know funny cuts a cut of a half at the top and half at the bottom customer said just go from the bottom and a small sliver at the top we had one option which we thought we could do was add another layer of plasterboard to the ceiling and that would have just closed that little gap in the end what we agreed to do was to add a very small beading around the top and customer was happy with that so that's what we intend to do to close up that small gap so we're back on the job now all our tiles have been grouted and we are now installing the shower cubicle glass so this is a sliding shower and I believe this shower size is about 1200 long by 700 deep so a nice space to have a shower in here um, these these are quite easy to install at most time just make sure you follow all the instructions don't skip any steps and also make sure you have someone to help you with you know moving the glass around and so on so we've got a shower head that hangs out of the wall a rain type of rain shower and we've also got a handheld one which is on the left hand side which we'll be able to take off the wall and use in your hand as well so you can see the the, the beading that we put at the top uh, is a timber beading obviously we'll have to undercoat it and we'll paint it to white to match the ceiling and this is where the handheld shower will be so we've got a bracket to fit on the wall so you can hang it So we also have a vent uh, on, on extract fan we're going to replace the vent because the old vent was yellow and it was cracking it was brittle again it's the original one all the plastic dried out so we can replace that there's also some cracks in the ceiling that you can see that we're going to have to deal with if you've got cracks like this in the ceiling best thing to do is gouge them out use a knife standing knife or something like that scrape them out and then you'll be able to fill them so you can see we've used a tile cleaner as well just to give the place a good clean and we've got um, the toilet to connect up now we also got a new designer radiator which again needs to be connected you can see the pipes coming out of the wall here so we need to connect that up And this is the door you can see the color of the door again it needs to be repainted it was white once 
we're going to be painting this with a water base satin paint and we also need to put a trim here as well just a little tip again a lot of people complain about painting gloss painting doors and over time them going yellow this tends to happen when you use oil based paints so to prevent that use a water base and now we're just connecting a new uh, water inlet to the toilet it's on a flexi hose braided flexi hose which uh, allows you a bit of flexibility and movement when you're installing toilets like this also if you had to service the toilet and move it pull it out for whatever reason a bit of flexible hose is very helpful for that and also makes it a lot easier installing it because these type of toilets you can't really access the pipe because everything's sort of hidden so you kind of need the pipes to be on flexible hoses the waste pipe needs to be on a flexible hose the inlet pipe needs to be on a flexible hose and then you can install them and then push them into place so you can see the inlet now this is why it needs to be flexible so that you can connect it like this and then raise it and put it into position so the inlet pipe is where the clean water fills the cistern up so we had a lot of trouble trying to find a toilet that would fit and wrap itself around that boxing in um, so yeah we had to take measurements we had to do a lot of research to find a toilet that a customer liked um, that would actually fit and we got one that was the perfect fit it fit exactly in the shape and it went right back to the wall so we're just tightening up the connections of the cistern it gets bolted to the pan and once that's done let's just put the lid on and the flush button and we're done so now we've got the bracket for the handheld shower we're just going to screw the bracket to the wall also make sure you remember where your pipes are make sure you're not going to screw into a pipe the worst thing you want to do is after you've tiled everything and you're putting your finishings and fittings and you screw into a pipe it's happened to all of us anyone in the trades knows it's happened to us so you know always know where, where your pipes are use a stud finder if you're not sure but in this case we know where the pipes were they pretty much all go down and there's nothing above so we knew where our pipes were Just another tip as well um, if you're doing something like this especially we've got like maybe type of color of tiles like this in between the two different tiles that you can see the left and the right hand side i like to use clear silicone for these type of joints because one you can't really see the silicone it doesn't stand out and also it's more forgiving especially if you're not that great at getting your silicone nice and smooth when it's clear even if it's not perfect you won't really notice it because it is clear um, but you obviously got to make sure your tiles are nice and straight and there's no big gaps and so on 
because obviously you know you can see through the silicon to a degree it is more translucent but you know you can kind of see through it so i'm just fitting in again a little bit of fittings i think this is the toilet roll holder and um another tip when you're drilling into tiles again make sure you use the correct bits for your tiles don't use your tile on hammer if you've got a hammer drill um, because the hammer could crack your tiles um, also if you're using porcelain tiles make sure you use porcelain tile bits you pretty much won't get through the tile with any other bit unless it's designed for porcelain there are good uh, diamond tip porcelain bits they are more expensive but they're pretty much the only way you're going to get through the tile um, and the tip for them is don't let them overheat if you let them overheat they can burn out very 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 quickly so have a small little cup of water or something and after you drilled for a couple of seconds dip the tip into the water let it cool down and then drill for a few seconds and dip it again just keep dipping it in you can get these kits that allow you to lubricate with water as you're drilling um i don't bother with them i've tried them before i just find them a lot of work and mess so i just have a little cup plastic cup of water i drill i dip it in cool it off drill dip it off cool it off and that way you prolong the life of your drill bit if you don't you're going to find out you're going to get one or two holes done and your bit's going to be blunt and you're going to have to go and buy another one and they're not the cheapest tile bits so i'm just undercoating the trim now and the whole scene has been undercoated as well at the same time this is a timber undercoat and uh, again instead of masking it i'm just using a little bit of card just to help move my edge but um if you're not you know got a steady hand then just use a bit of masking tape so we're almost there we did replace the spotlights as well and put in some new spotlights we put them in the same locations so we got some that fit in the same hole but we just brought some modern ones so all in all i think this bathroom took us about 10 days or so to do start to finish so Pretty much two weeks.
and you can see here we've put in a new grill for the vent as well a white plastic grill Once this uh, undercoating is done, then the ceiling can get uh, painted and the ceiling and the beading can get two coats of paint and that'll be the last of the painting done. starting to deal with the cracks the four small cracks that we've got in the plasterboard ceiling these cracks have appeared along the joints and um, couldn't tell you exactly the reason why um, but yes we can see they're applying these cracks in here so just mixing up some filler and uh, apply this in let it dry then I can just lightly sand it down and then we can paint the ceiling more than likely these ceilings have just been joint filled um, which is many people ask a question about this you know why do we plaster or what's the difference and so on so joint filling is where you apply some tape and then you just apply the filling compound over the joins and over the screw holes is something that's more common in the states uh, places like Australia as well in the UK it's not very common it's becoming more common on the newer builds because for one reason it, it requires less material and it also arguably is quicker um, so obviously companies are trying to maximize their profits when they're building houses and they're trying to make them as quick as possible So you can see here the bathroom is pretty much complete just show you around ceilings have been painted door has been painted and frame you can see the radiator has been connected up as well and we've put some little caps around where they come out of the wall just to tidy them up and it matches nicely we also painted the pipes and everywhere you can see now has been siliconed around the bottom the shower around the toilet sinks everywhere 
so that is the end of the video hope you guys enjoyed this one let us know what you think in the comment section and if you have any further questions i will see you on the next one take care